Welcome back to My Point Exactly here on Spot On Sports, the new wave of sports where we're not just accurate and spot on. Got my fellas in the building, John, Rod, and my boy Trey. What's happening, fellas? You know the vibe. Oh, man, what's up? Chilling, man, chilling. All right, well, let's let's just get it underway, get straight into it. Recently, Dak just, just broke the news, man. Broke the bank, finally got that well-deserved long-term deal with the Dallas Cowboys worked. $160 million. He got $126 million guaranteed. This makes him the second highest paid quarterback behind Patrick Mahomes. And he also received the largest signing bonus in NFL history for $66 million. So overall, coming off his injury, this first season, Dak is due a total of $75 million. Do you guys think this is a, a, a good or a bad move for the Cowboys to pay Dak this contract? That's a lot of money, and believe it or not, I don't think that's a good signing. Like, it could be a good signing, but I got to see how the Cowboys going to build around Dak with that money that they gave him. You got to think about it. They only rank 14 in salary, and they got a lot they got to work on. Not just the quarterback position. They need that offensive line. Got to be rebuilt. Too many injuries, and that defense is horrible. So it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I just got to see how you're going to play off that injury. But most importantly, they got to protect them with that injury. Can they do that? I'm not quite sure with their records in the past. So I'll let you guys go. Yeah, I'll go, Nick. Nick, they had to pay the man. Like, it was obvious last year, after he got hurt, the offense that was averaging 36 points a game, it was a top five offense. It went, to, it went bad, bro. Like, with Ben DiNucci, Andy Dalton, Gary Gilbert, they could not move the ball. They were getting sacked left and right. I know uh, Rod said offensive line was hurt, but um, without Dak mobility, he he couldn't avoid sack to help the offensive line out. Um, I mean, who else, what else are they going to do? Like, let's be real. They put their paint themselves in the corner. Everything was built. All the people they paid, like Zeke, Zach Martin, Amari Cooper, Tyron, they're all win-now players. So you can't go out and draft a quarterback and try to win now because it's going to take him at least two to three years to get be- get good. And within those two to three years, then all your players you paid already will be phased out. So you, they had to go with Dak. And, like, they had no choice. Like, I know he hurt. He coming off injury. But they said he's already at the facility. He should be 100% by April. Um, he's been – he's been – the last two years, Dak been top five in yards per game. It's a successful rate. Passing game, DVOA, um, explosive plays. Like, he's been a top-five quarterback. His, his, uh, his first five years in the NFL are comparable to Russell Wilson. Everybody say Deshaun Watson's better than him, but his numbers are comparable to Deshaun Watson. So he's been producing. So why, why not pay the quarterback who's producing? And plus, you built the team for him. Like, you drafted C.D. Lamb, paid Amari Cooper, get, uh, paid Zeke, you paid Lyell. You, you built this team for that. It's a win-now team. Now, uh, I know the, the guaranteed money is $75 million, 30, It's like $40 million every year. But the first season, the cap hit is only $22 million. So you can take whatever money you got left at the pan deck and just go invest on defense because the cap is going down. So there's going to be a lot of players that go take these mer- mercenary deals, these one-year deals. So go pay some good players one-year deal. Like go give Shaq Barrett one-year $15 million. Just go pay mercenaries. Build the defense up and just try to win. Uh, I, I agree with uh, Trey uh, for different reasons. And first of all, I'm going to say if Shaq Barrett accepted a one-year $15 million deal coming <laughs> off of a Super Bowl and two years removed from leading the league in sacks, then common sense really ain't common no more. But anyway, <laughs> you know, what I'm going to say is, is that the Cowboys had to pay Dak. He, he's the leader. He's, he's the heartbeat of the team. Um, and players look at stuff like that. Like when you look at those Texans players, I'm sure they're looking at the organization a little sideways for how they're handling uh, the Deshaun Watson situation. And you don't want that same situation in Dallas where that team rallies behind Dak Prescott, offense, defense, that whole locker room. And if they're looking at Jerry Jones, like, and you won't even pay the quarterback, you're doing the quarterback like this, you know, how you going to do me? So they had to pay him. He was the heartbeat of the team. And Dak Prescott was going to be the starting quarterback for the Cowboys this year, regardless whether it was on the one-year franchise tag or it was on the, the four-year deal that he just got. So why not go ahead and sign him? It's the perfect match. You saw what he's done in. I mean, he started as the third string quarterback, came in in 2016, started, took him to a 13-3 and three year, rookie of the year, 
And I mean, he's done nothing, but I think he's third in wins since he's came into the league behind Russell Wilson and Tom Brady. Um, and, and so he's been everything you asked for. And, and honestly, like I said, unless you're the Texans or the Patriots, when you have that type of quarterback, you don't let them walk out the building. So I think that they had to pay him. Um, and now you can move forward. I'm glad that Trey, um, there's so many misconceptions and just false information going out about the cap and people see 40 million and they think, Oh, they can't pay anybody else. Oh my God. He's making 40 million. Like Trey said, the cap hit is 22 million this year. Teddy Bridgewater and Jimmy Garoppolo have a higher cap hit this year than Dak Prescott does. All right. And so it's, it's not going to affect anything. He had a $31 million guaranteed cap hit last year on the franchise tag, and they were still able to fill the team. Now we could, we could question whether that team had talent or not, because they looked horrible at times, but regardless, they had a lot of names that y'all, that we thought were talented before the season, right, on that roster while Dak Prescott was was uh, counting for $31 million against the cap, and now that's 22 So I think this is a move you had to make. Now you can move forward. You know, we've kind of been discussing for the last three years, is, is Dak worth this contract? Should he get paid? Which is crazy because we were discussing this when Jimmy Garoppolo was the highest-paid quarterback in league history, making $27 million a year. So the Cowboys, and you know, with their negligence, waiting three years to see what Dak was really worth, he hit him over the head, and now they got to pay forty. That cost him about fifty million more dollars, waiting three years. But ultimately, it's a move they had to make, and now the Cowboys can move forward and focus on winning football games. Let me ask you guys this, because we all know being Dallas Cowboys quarterback, there's a lot that come with that, right? So let me just ask you guys this, because it's something I don't want to happen, especially with Dak Prescott. Say you gave you give him the money, right? What if he doesn't perform? He doesn't play good his first year off that injury, right? And the offensive line is not healthy right now. The defense is not healthy right now. There's going to be a lot of talk about him not performing with that fan base, and you guys know that. So my question for you guys is, with the offense played the way it did with the offensive line and the defense playing as bad as it was, bottom of the league, which one do you build around most? And Trey, you mentioned it's a win-now situation with this team. You did say that. So which side do you build around? I mean, to me, the offense is, like, everybody's paid on that side. Like, draft some backup offensive linemen, but I wouldn't put no more money into that offense. All the money should go to that defense. And everybody's talking about pressure on that, man. But you look at these quarterbacks in the NFC East, man. I mean, Dak is head and shoulders better than every other team starting quarterback right now. I, to me, I feel like if they don't go 6-0 and versus the division, something wrong. Because I don't believe in Jalen Hurts. Uh, we already know Daniel Jones and Daniel Jones and Taylor Heineke. Like, come on, man, Taylor Heineke, that, that's their starting quarterback right now. So I feel like Dak is head and shoulders above them. And uh, like, they go, like I said, last year they averaged 36 points a game when Dak played. I don't think uh, even though the defense is so bad, if we could have kept that up, I think they would have won the division this year if he wouldn't have got hurt. They would have like 9-7. to seven. I don't think they would have lost both games to Washington with Dak. I don't think they would have lost uh, the game to Philly the first time without without with Dak. So – they just win now. Like, invest everything in the defense. Like, all the draft picks, everything. Like, you get a slot receiver, I guess, in the fifth round. But to me, it's, it's time to invest in the defense. The Cowboys are, like, bottom five in the NFL when it comes to money dedicated to the defense. And that's the, that's why it looked so bad last year. It's not, it's not it's everybody's talking about coaching. It wasn't just coaching. It was a lack of talent on that side of the ball. Like, outside of Demarcus Lawrence, I don't feel like they have another plus player on that side of the ball right now. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think you continue to, to build on the offense. I think these days um, it's more so about timely stops rather than defense winning championships. I think that, you know, we kind of saw an anomaly um, in the Super Bowl with, with the, the way that the Buccaneers handled the Chiefs, right? But I, I think that the way that the league is shifting, um, it's an offensive league, and, and ultimately you want to outscore your opponent. Uh, I mean, that's the goal, period, right? But you want to, you know, if you could put up 35-40, that's what you want to do. Right. You don't want to win a 17, 20 football game. And so um, I think that they need to allocate some more resources to the, the defense. you got to figure out what you have in Leighton Vanderish. I think we know what we have in Jalen Smith, which is not what we thought we had. Um, Demarcus Lawrence, you know, he's been good, but he hasn't been worth 21 million. Um, the DBs look awful. So, I mean, I think that you got to find creative ways, um, kind of like they've been doing the last couple of years, kind of one year flyer on Alden Smith. Uh, one year flyer on Robert Quinn, kind of find creative ways to to maybe piece that defense together. Um, but I think ultimately, you know, maybe get a star or two if you can. But ultimately, the offense is what's going to be what's going to carry this Dallas Cowboys team. And so I think you keep investing in that offense um, and, and try to put together a, a competent, well, like 
kind of like a well sound defense, right? You're not going to have the 2000 Ravens defense where you got Ed Reed back here, Ray Lewis, like they don't have the money to do that or the resources, right? So what do you do? You get sound football players that know the scheme and where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there. And then you let the offense win games for you and carry you to a Super Bowl, hopefully. Right. Well, I think it's all going to fall back on the coaches. I agree with everything, but all y'all said, I think it's really going to fall back on the coaches. They got to make the decisions, put the players in, in position to win. Cowboys definitely have some talent. I think y'all have some uh, some young talent, some young players from the uh, previous drafts that can um, sprout out and do some, make some plays in the future. Like, uh, what's the corner y'all had? Diggs? Yeah, Trayvon Diggs. And I really, I just want to uh, quickly want to say this. With the addition of Dan Quinn, um, as defensive coordinator, I think you're going to see them really getting back uh, simple. This year, the defense was bad because they were trying to be Mike McCarthy and Mike Nolan's goal was to be multiple on defense, to give so many oh, different cool. looks. And we saw that the players couldn't handle that, right? But the year before that, the Cowboys were 10th in total defense, right? Because they kept it simple. They were just running that Tampa two. I think you're going to mm -hmm. see them with the addition of Dan Quinn getting back to real simple. A lot of cover one man, a lot of cover three scheme. You know, back to his Legion of Boom days. Now, of course, we don't have the personnel that the Legion of Boom did, but they're going to keep it simple. A lot of cover three zone and a lot of cover one man. And, and just like I said, it's, it's all about being sound, having smart football players that are in the right place at the, at the right time. So I think that you'll see a boost in the Cowboys defense, not simply because they added more talent, but because they'll, they'll be um, more simplified on defense and know where they're supposed to be and not have all of those mental breakdowns we saw in the beginning of the season where you saw DBs running all over the place. That sound like to me a bunch of dumb football players, man. Like, come on, man. You can pay millions of dollars to play football, dog. Like, come on, man. You get you should be able to adjust on the fly if you're talented. I mean, New England play multiple defenses all the time. That's, I don't know, man. That's what it sounds like to but me. Trey, it's the Cowboys. They they like the deepest leader, though. I mean, the biggest leader you have is Jalen Smith. <laughs> I mean, they don't he ain't really no have leader, dog. Like, come on, he, dog. He be, he be <laughs> swiping with that's my point. He's 40 yard runs down the field. Though. He's supposed to be the leader. And then in the secondary, there's really not any leader neither. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's a communication thing. Camaraderie, you can have to say. And, and I'll say, yeah, like the Patriots do do different things, like on defense, like multiple looks. But at the end of the day, they're essentially a man coverage team, right? They got two of the best man coverage corners in the league, right? With Stephon Gilmore and J.C. Jackson. So they might give you different looks. But at the end of the day, they're pressing up, they're playing man, and they're daring you to beat them, right? They're, they're, not, they're not going out there, cover three, one play, cover two, the next play, cover four quarters, you know, what the, the Cowboys was trying to do in the beginning of the season. Like, they're going out there and letting their corners lock up. It's like, it's like we have lack of talent and they're dumb players, too. <laughs> <laughs> they wasn't dumb the year before when they was 10th in the league in total defense. So, hey, we got to blame the coaches, too. <laughs>